The ASUS ROG Strix X670E is a new option on the market for those who want to upgrade to AMD's new AM5 Ryzen 7000 CPU range. It comes with the new socket as well as DDR5 memory slots and some other enhancements here and there to add a bit of more value to the board. This is the second AMD board I have reviewed in the past few weeks, so make sure you check out the other variation, the Gigabyte Aorus X670E Master Motherboard review in the description down below. The ASUS ROG Strix X670E is the most premium Ryzen 7000 board you can get from ASUS. While it might not look like it from a distance due to the lack of fancy RGB, OLED displays and other cosmetic features, it packs a heavy price tag of around 10,000 Rand. It is a feature-rich board that is designed for overclocking too. It packs PCIe 5.0 for both the SSD and GPU slots and you'll likely want to pair this board with the best Ryzen 7000 CPU you can get. I did just that and I used the 7950X to benchmark this board. The motherboard comes packed with a load of high-speed USB 3.2 ports and support for USB 3.2 Gen 2x2. It even has USB 4. Basically, you won't need any other ports if you're using this motherboard. ASUS has gone to town packing all the juice possible into this tech. Power phases are maxed out, it has the latest USB ports, and the PCIe means it's ready for the future. Other specs and features of this board include the following. I honestly think ASUS could have done a lot more here with this motherboard. After testing out the Maxima Z790 Extreme, this board looks like it's come out of the arc in comparison. Even more so when you look at the price range of this board. You just expect more. While some might be okay with the simpler design, I'm sure you'll likely feel the same after spending money on it only to install the board and have one puny little light on it. Instead of RGB, ASUS has slapped heat sinks all over this board. The only RGB you'll find is on the rear I.O. It features a glowing ROG logo that can be tweaked using Armory Crate. That's about it. There are some nice decals around the board though. There's a really cool one at the back which is kind of pointless for most people who will cover it up. However, the rest of the board doesn't shy away from slapping ROG and other cliche and cheesy gaming words all over it. The board features two PCIe 5.0 slots designed for the latest GPUs, so you can put two RTX 4090s in here if you have nothing better to spend your money on. There's also two 4 M.2 slots meaning you can take advantage of the latest SSD tech and load things so fast your head will spin. As for the cooling, this board has a load of VRMs across it. There's also a dual heatsink array that provides extra surface area to absorb heat during overclocking. The I.O. houses 13 USB ports in total and all of them support USB 3.2. There's also a Q release latch that lets you easily eject your GPU from the motherboard. Other features include clear CMOS and BIOS flashback buttons and a Q code LED. In the box you'll get a few extra goodies. These include the Wi-Fi antenna that will help with the board's Wi-Fi 6E support. There's also an ROG GPU holder and some SATA cables and extra thermal pads and M.2 latches. While you'll likely use your own CPU on this board, I do want to share a few benchmarks I had from running the AMD Ryzen 7950X CPU. I also use the motherboard in the ASUS Helios gaming case with a Ragen 2 cooler and a few other components. The full build include the following components. My tests were from across a few games and CPU benchmarks. I ran a few and then automatically overclocked the CPU using the Ryzen Master Overclocking tool. Similar to the Ryzen 77X, the 7950X also hit 95 degrees and capped at that temperature. This is a normal situation for these new CPUs as AMD intends you to get to this heat in order to max out the performance of the CPU. I saw a single thread workload on the 7950X hit 5.725 GHz which is a bit lower than the advertised 5.8 GHz. The CPU mainly sat between 5.5 and 5.7 GHz during my initial test. I got the following scores. As you can see, this is a beefy CPU. It is almost 60% faster than its predecessor, the 5950X, on single core workloads. Of course, this comes at the cost of extra power. The 7950X can peak at 230 watts, which is also 60% increase over the 5950X. But the extra wattage is totally worth it. Overall, the ASUS ROG Strix X670E is a decent board if you're jumping onto the Ryzen 7000 train. However, it is a bit pricey and kind of bland for my taste. Combined with the Ryzen 7950X, it delivered some exceptional performance. 
So much so that I actually struggled at times to hit AMD's 95 degrees Celsius preferred heat on the CPU. The chipset is definitely one of the best you can get and unlike the Intel's 13th Gen i9 it doesn't use as much power so perhaps it's the better route to go. So those are my thoughts on this motherboard. Are you looking to pick it up? Let us know in the comments down below. We've also recently uploaded a load of motherboard reviews in the past few weeks. So check them out. I'll leave links in the description down below. As usual, please do consider liking and subscribing and visit www.glitch.online for more gaming and tech news. Until next time, farewell.